If you're only thinking about how great your dream life will be while also being disappointed with your current life, then you'll keep manifesting a life where you're unhappy in the present moment. Practice gratitude, babe. Touch grass. I am my dream girl instead of trying to be someone else. Because I'm just sick and tired of self-sabotage. In this economy, no. What doesn't get measured doesn't get improved. Hi besties, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Gabby's little cozy corner. It's giving podcasts. All I need is like a mic. But then I will be yapping all day, so props not. If you guys don't already know, I'm doing a 50 day hard challenge. I'm currently ending week five, entering week six. And so I wanted to share the five healthy habits that I've been implementing to just keep me on track and just to prevent any self-sabotage that will just throw me off this challenge. And I think this would just be so helpful for people who are also doing this challenge or just in general, just wanna implement better healthy habits into 2024 because this is the year that we actually achieve our goals. I'm so tired of the self-sabotage. I'm tired of the laziness. I'm tired of the undisciplined energy. And I'm just tired of not achieving the goals that I set for myself and just having that feeling of disappointment. Get comfy, get some snacks, make a little fun drink, make a coffee, make a matcha, and let's just get into it. My first and arguably my most important healthy habit is fixing the way that we talk to ourselves. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing the multiple aesthetics online of the it girl aesthetic. Being that girl, being a clean girl, and don't get me wrong, I've fallen into that trap. At one point, I really wanted to embody the clean girl aesthetic, but I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing these like wellness influencer podcasts just talk about surface level aesthetics of like, oh, here's how to be that girl. Here's how to be the clean girl. You know what I mean? And the reason why I chose not to think like that anymore going into this challenge is because I wanted to let go of the principle of chasing this aesthetic or chasing this idea of this girl because for me, it leads to a lot of comparison. It's a whole different story to be inspired by a certain aesthetic than to actually just like really consume yourself in that aesthetic because that develops into a negative like portrayal of yourself. It just doesn't make you feel good. And so the moral is if you're only thinking about how great your dream life will be while also being disappointed with your current life, then you'll keep manifesting a life where you're unhappy in the present moment. That just like really sinks in deep to me because I would go through phases of chasing that aesthetic and just being really unhappy with the current version of myself and really unhappy with how my life was. And so with that, with me chasing this aesthetic, with me chasing this, you know, dream version of myself, I just kept manifesting the same life I was living. And I got to the point where I was just so sick and tired of feeling that way. And so I sat down, reflected, just did a huge brain dump into my journal. I chose to say to myself, I am my dream girl instead of trying to be someone else. And I began to believe that I am my dream girl already. From there, I began to ask myself, okay, since I am my dream girl, how does she behave? What are her values? What does she do every morning? What are her non-negotiables? What's her morning routine? What's her nighttime routine look like? What kind of friends does she surround herself with? And so from that moment, I just have had a breakthrough. I'm just feeling so driven with my current life to achieve my goals. And so that's why the habit of talking better to myself every day is so important to me because it's changed my mindset instead of wanting to be somebody else. I am my dream girl. She's in here, she's within me, but I just need to ask myself every day, you know, how does she behave? What are her characteristics? What are her values? Does she make better healthy decisions during her 50 day heart challenge instead of feeling sorry for herself and derailing from the challenge? Things like that, just switching my mindset of like, what does she do? Because at the end of the day, the 50 day heart challenge and just life overall, is about decision making. It's about making decisions that are gonna propel you to be better the next day. And that's my goal in life, is to just be 1% better every single day. And that comes with my decision making and how I talk, and how I, and how I, and how I, and how I talk. <laughs> Bruh and how I talk to myself. So that first habit leads into my second one, which is visualization. I go back to the questions I ask myself. Since I am my dream girl, what are her values? How does she behave? What do her routines look like? What does her day in the life look like? And so I would go to Pinterest and I would look up photos that kind of answer that question. She's active every day. So I would look up photos of girlies at Pilates, girlies at the gym, she films content every day because that is the life that she wants to live. She wants to be a full-time content creator. And so I would look up, you know, aesthetic photos of content creation of the influencer lifestyle, just little things like that. And so I'd find these pictures on Pinterest. I'd print them out and that's essentially what became my vision board because I'm visualizing what I look like. So my vision board is the best form of visualization for me because I see it every day. It's literally hanging up right there, 
right next to my mirror because I'm a Leo. I have to look into the mirror every single day. It's just my personality, okay? Don't fight me. The stars chose that. For me, it's very important for me to see it every single day so I can go into the day visualizing what kind of decisions I'm gonna make throughout the day to propel me forward to my goals. And actually, it was my Pilates teacher who really instilled the habit of visualization for me. I had a class with her towards the end of 2023. I was overwhelmed from the holidays. I was burnt out. I was ready for just a fresh start. And we were in the middle of class and I was holding a plank. I was shaking and we were holding a plank for literally a minute 45. She noticed that we were all struggling and she was like, okay ladies, this is the point in class where you visualize what does your strongest self look like? How do you want to feel going into 2024? And how does your highest version of yourself feel? And girl, that just gave me the kick in the butt that I really needed. I was like, oh, period. Holding this plank for two more minutes, like I don't even care. Something so simple like that just kind of snapped me back to reality because I really went into that workout not feeling the best about myself, having no intentions for class. And I was just kind of going through the motions. It just snapped me back to reality because the highest version of myself leaves all my problems and leaves all that self-pity at the door when I enter my Pilates studio. I am there to work on myself and my strength and my mental health. And she just kept reminding us like visualize her, just think about her, see her in your head. And so now when I go into any workout, before I enter the studio, just visualize, how do I wanna feel after this class? How do I wanna look like? I wanna feel and look strong. And so she really instilled that habit into me. My third habit is something tangible and it is planning your workouts. Duh, like that sounds literally so simple. Simple, it's stupid but I remember this so clearly but at the end of week two of my hard challenge I did a reflection at the end of the week and I asked myself questions like what was something that I could do to improve to go into next week and after reflecting I realized that I had a lot of decision fatigue from that week because I didn't plan out my workouts I remember feeling really frustrated with myself because I couldn't get into the classes that I wanted and I felt a little bit stressed like going into my workouts because I didn't schedule them far out in advance to know what to expect and when I didn't plan my workouts it led to me not going to my morning classes which is my strength I hate taking evening classes and so when I didn't have those classes planned out in the morning, I would have to do an at-home workout in the evenings, which I absolutely hate. My at-home workouts just do not hit. I need someone yelling in my ear telling me what to do. And so that's why I've made it a habit every Sunday to plan out my workouts in advance because one, it keeps me accountable because have you seen the no-show fees or the cancellation fees on a workout class? One thing about me, I will spend so much money on a shopping spree, but the one thing I will not do is pay a $25 no-show fee or like a $15 cancellation fee. So it holds me accountable in that regard that I am not paying an additional fee for missing a class. And with that, it avoids the decision fatigue of figuring out, oh, what am I gonna do for my workout today? I'm feeling stressed. And so that directly correlated with the success of my challenge. Like if I'm gonna be successful with completing this, I need to plan my workouts to a T and avoid the stress of doing so. Now at this point, ClassPass should actually sponsor me and just pay me for this. But if you don't have ClassPass, I don't know what you're doing. If you want to go to like Pilates, to spin class, to hot yoga, you need to get on ClassPass and pay the monthly membership to access all these studios. Because for me, going to Pilates as frequently as I do would not be attainable for me just because it's like $50 for a drop-in class in this economy. No, my plan, I pay $75 a month and I'm able to go to a workout class almost every single day and it pays for itself. It has been a game changer for trying new workouts and for getting my workout schedule in line. I have a link down below in the description box to get your first month free. This is not sponsored at all. It's just, I love class pass and I love to put my besties on. And moving on to my fourth healthy habit, journaling. I know what you're thinking, I know. Everyone and their mom has been talking about it. You've heard it on every wellness influencers podcast. And I'm here to back that up and to validate it. Instead of just preaching about it, I'm gonna share with you my actual journaling routine. That way you can actually put it into practice instead of me just yapping about the mental benefits of it. So we're about to get really vulnerable up in here. I do three journal entries a day and it takes me literally only five minutes out of my day. You have time for five minutes for yourself, okay? My first journal prompt is three things that I'm grateful for. We all know the benefits of expressing gratitude attitude so I'm not even gonna get into it I'm just gonna read to you I'm thankful for my physical and mental health I'm thankful for the roof over my head and I'm thankful for the health of my loved ones like practice gratitude babe touch grass sometimes we're just so stuck in our own world and especially being in a digital era like please we need to touch grass and just express a little bit of gratitude. My second journal entry is three things that I love about myself at least one of them needs to be physical and the reason why I do that is because I get uncomfortable like 
saying the things I love about myself, especially when it comes to physical characteristics of myself. Like, I don't know why. It just makes me uncomfy. I don't like talking about it, but for the sake of this video and just sharing my journal routine with you, I'm gonna say it. So one, I love my ability to listen and my empathy towards others. I love my desire to be better and I love my arms and the strength they hold. So the reason why I did that is because I'm actually like honestly self-conscious about my arms. Like I've always just had bigger arms. I was a college athlete. I always was just trying to like bulk up and just perform as an athlete. It's just not my favorite trait about myself. I'm working on loving them more, okay? I also feel a lot of like changes in my body when it comes to the strength of my arms because I've been working out every day. I notice the difference. So I do love the strength that they hold even though I'm a little self-conscious about it. And my third journal entry is intentions for the day. I like to set at least three intentions for the day to keep me on track with my to-do list and to just stay focused. Number one, less screen time. Two, hold my planks. So this was going into Pilates. And number three, nourish my body. That literally took me five minutes to write. It's not rocket science. I think the biggest turnoff for people for journaling is figuring out what to write about. And I think there's just like a false narrative that you need to be doing a brain dump every single day. I do a brain dump maybe once every two to three weeks. Like I'm not in here just like yapping in here. I'm really just doing my three journal prompts for the day because I want something easy. I don't want to just like be scribbling in my journal endlessly about everything that's in my mind. But when you have actual prompts to keep you focused and have like an intention for journaling, it's so effective and you just feel so good. So I highly recommend just doing a simple journal prompt. Like you can steal lines and just try it out. And then my last healthy habit is tracking. What doesn't get measured doesn't get improved. How would I know if I'm being effective in my challenge? if I'm not tracking everything. And it's the same thing with like a to-do list. When you have a to-do list, you always check it off, right? So to track if you're actually making progress and to track if you're accomplishing your things for the day. So that's also what I was talking about with my 12 week planner video. How am I supposed to know if I'm actually making progress towards my goals if I'm not tracking my KPIs? And this is a perfect example. Last year, one of my goals was to be fluent in Spanish. My boyfriend is Mexican. And so him and his family always speak Spanish. I can understand maybe 70% of the time, but I am not good at responding back in Spanish. Like I can understand the cheese man. Like I'm always understanding the gossip, but I wanna be able to to talk back and I want to be able to contribute to the conversation and talk some cheese man. I just hate the feeling of always listening but not being able to respond back. So that was one of my goals last year and clearly did not achieve it because I just did not put in the effort that was required to become fluent in Spanish. I didn't track myself of how many days I really sat down and I tried to learn. And so this year as you saw my 12 week planner, my goal is still to be fluent in Spanish. And so in my tracker, my habits to get there is that I need to practice with Duolingo 30 minutes a day. I need to watch a Spanish movie once a week. I need to converse with my boyfriend. So when I go throughout the week, I want to be able to track that and mark it off if I actually achieved it. And I can look at my KPIs and see, oh, I only accomplished 30% of my Spanish goal. Like, of course, I'm not going to be getting closer to my goals. So that's just one example of tracking how you're really doing and if you're really making progress. So yeah. Whew, that was a mouthful. I just wanted to share with you guys my five healthy habits that have been really keeping me on track with not only my hard challenge, but just with my overall goals to achieve in life. And I really hope you guys take some and try to implement them into your life. They have really just been helping me stay on track and staying disciplined towards my goals this year. Cause I'm just sick and tired of self-sabotage. I'm ready to be my highest self and like I am my dream girl. And once I really started just embodying that and implementing these habits, I just feel so much more fulfilled with my efforts. Yeah, thanks for listening to me. It just yap your ear off. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next vid. Love you, bye.